And today's service providers are struggling to support ever-expanding demands from both consumers and enterprises, including the need to transmit and store increasing amounts of data as consumption of OTT services and the adoption of the Internet of Things grows. These data throughputs will only rise alongside user expectations for a seamless connectivity experience. In our studio here at TIA 2015 Network of the Future to give us more on the business case for cloud NFE and the next generation of architecture is Ashish Singh. He's general manager and vice president of products at SK Telecom Americas. We also have Claudio Frascoli, head of sales and teleco analytics Latin America for Nokia Networks. And on the end is Amit Tawari. He's vice president of strategic alliances and systems engineering at Affirmed Networks. And panelists, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thanks for being here. I want to start this discussion on uh, next generation networking, NFE, mm -hmm. cloud, and the business cases surrounding those with a recent study that stated that the virtual, virtualized telecom market will reach uh, between five and six billion dollars by 2018. Ashish, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. What primary technology is driving this market? You know, I think especially in this uh, new innovation for the next generation of networks, open source technologies are playing a very important role. Um, OpenStack as a cloud computing platform is uh, uh, creating an anchor for distributed architecture on which you can use the storage, computation, and networking uh, as the demand increases or reduces. And on top of that, you have SDN technologies uh, uh, by Open Daylight and also NFV through Open NFV. And in conjunction, uh, a lot of these technologies are going to play a major role in uh, uh, creating a network which is a lot more uh, software-centric rather than more uh, hardware-centric in the future. Amit, uh, before I came uh, to this conference, even just last night, uh, it, it was my impression that uh, even uh, service providers, operators, carriers, were still a little bit reticent, a little hesitant to get into or fully immersed in the SDN, NFE, and cloud world. But after the AT&T keynote today, I think that's uh, changed or largely changed. Would you agree? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as, as the AT&T keynote very clearly said, right, uh, you know, they are not holding anything back, right? They are, they are going into this full bore. And one thing, you know, you know, Affirmed has been around for five years now. We've noticed the change, you know, in the last, you know, two, two and a half years. Uh, initially, when the position paper for NFV was published, there was a certain amount of, uh, you know, evaluation, so to say, right? You know, service providers have high quality networks. They are very careful about what they put on those networks. Uh, the initial, you know, reaction to the first, you know, you know, publish of the paper was evaluation and understanding. Uh, besides folks like, you know, the people who authored that, you know, paper, they were very much in it. What we've noticed in the last, you know, last 18, 18 months or so, most service providers are actually going into this more and more full bore for two distinct reasons. One, you know, they understand the capex and the opex part of running legacy networks is is really unsustainable. We've already seen data ARPUs actually peak and in some cases starting to decline. The second part is for them to actually innovate and out-innovate the OTT providers, right? They really need notions of NFV and they need to be able to stitch services together that the legacy networks don't really afford. So what we are noticing this month over month is this drive of embracing NFV and driving the technologies that Ashish mentioned and ramping up on this. So it is, you're absolutely correct, you know, it's no longer a case of reticence, it's very much all in and accelerating. Claudio, certainly a number of benefits for the telco community in the, in the uh, NFE, SDN, and cloud space, but what would you say is the primary challenge, the primary hurdle for that community? Well, uh, as, as Amit uh, alluded to, you know, the benefits are quite clear, right? You know, and, and I, uh, IT cloud has changed our own lives uh, as consumers. So these are the same benefits that telco providers are looking uh, for, you know, agility, scalability, flexibility, efficiency overall, right? Uh, what I believe is the, uh, the key um, uh, hurdle or, you know, the thing that really needs to be understood very well is that uh, telco and IT are two different words. Uh, so uh, what works with IT uh, may not necessarily work with telcos because telco operators have some uh, more stringent constraints when it comes to availability, uh, when it comes to performance. So uh, I think the key aspect to, to, uh, uh, to be understood is that uh, uh, telco providers need to understand uh, that their network is not just 
an IT network, uh, porting a cloud to a telco environment. We require different type of architectures, uh, different type of uh, solutions from a hardware and software perspective to uh, cater to the requirements of telco. Ashish, I want to find out uh, from you what you think the relationship is between the telco uh, having the, the great need to add value within their network, to pro provide new services within their network, mm -hmm. and the impending uh, next generation network, if you will, i.e. 5G network. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Amit pointed out to uh, ARPU of, uh, on the data, uh, either saturating or plateauing, and I think that's the observation service providers globally are uh, seeing. And I think that is part of the reason because what I believe is the next generation is no longer about ARPU, it is about average revenue per experience, and that is ARPE if you want to call it. And if you want to transition your business uh, model into that, then you will have to provide different quality of service, uh, different SLAs for different vertical segments rather than providing the same network and same QoS for various enterprises. And I think that is, uh, that is the primary driver where technologies like uh, NFV and SDN and a lot of the new five generation network uh, requirements are going to help telco transition into more of an average revenue per experience organization. Amit, uh, what, what is an example of, let's say, a, a business case or use case for a telco as we migrate uh, towards these 5G architectures? Sure. Uh, you know, a firm is deployed worldwide with, uh, you know, multiple, you know, telcos, uh, and we noticed a, a wide, uh, you know, spectrum of use cases, Abe, right? And the thing that we, you know, I'm, I'm sure we all find very reassuring in our experiences, it's a wide spectrum of use cases, right? Uh, you know, which goes back to the earlier point about NFV getting embraced, you know, rapidly, right? I'll share with you a very interesting scenario. Uh, we engaged with an operator, uh, you know, a tier one operator, actually, who was very sensitive to the point of, uh, you know, you know, saturating ARPUs. Uh, they were also concerned about uh, the time it takes to deploy new services, right, on their existing network. One of the things uh, that they engaged with us on was using NFV-based framework architecture. They wanted to actually create network services for verticals in the M2M Internet of Things area, right? Now, you know, very interesting notion. It's a, it has a different ARPU, it has a different economic point, and they wanted to use the new technology for this area. That's what we worked with them on. We designed, uh, you know, a QoS capable network which could actually provide appropriate QoS for different types of verticals, right? You know, the kind of quality of service and user experience required for smart meters is different than that for a connected car. Now, very interesting, we, we, we deployed this network out there. You know, they, they looked at this network, they looked at the capability set and they said, you know, guess what? The type of requirements and parameters that you are driving on this network are really no different than what I'm using on my H2H, my human-to-human -human network. So here's a scenario of a particular business case that started off on a low ARPU, low expense, high velocity service creation type of network. When it got deployed and the characteristics were measured, they decided, well, you know, I can use the same underlying network for my existing subscriber and enterprise network. And see, things like this, being able to actually take a certain application, deploy that application on the new NFV-based network, and then leverage that across for, you know, your legacy network and run those same applications now on this, that really is the thing that makes this technology so dear to operators' heart, right? Because, you know, this is, you know, not only the first application, but the three, four, five, and six applications also justify the investment that they made in this network. Claudia, I want to ask you, as we, again, migrate towards these 5G, these next generation architectures, how will that change the relationship between the telco community and the OTTs out there? Yeah, it's an interesting question because what Amit just said is exactly what kind of uh, threw off the uh, telco uh, providers a few years back, right? So when the OTT came to, to the fore, they had that kind of agility and speed of innovation that they couldn't, that, that telcos didn't have. So that, that is what really challenged their business model, right? Uh, the situation has evolved already in the past few years and we see a lot more cooperation than competition uh, compared to the past. Uh, but what NFV and cloud will really bring is the same level of agility, the same level of speed that OTT have today 
in the uh, telco domain. So, you know, it will be exciting. It will be uh, definitely uh, more competition. There will be a lot more cooperation uh, with uh, use cases that are cutting across different domains and different boards. In, 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 in a way, we, are, we will not talk about telcos and OTTs anymore. It will just be services to a much wider ecosystem. So definitely exciting times ahead. I want to uh, finish this discussion asking all three of you the same question as we migrate towards NFE, SDN technologies, the cloud as a, as a service and all the services within the cloud, um, next generation architectures, 5G. Um, if you, and I'll admit, I'll start with you if you don't mind, if you were asked um, by, the, uh, by an operator about what they should be looking forward to and uh, what shifts they should make in their uh, business practices and strategies, um, what would that, in a, in a nutshell, what would that advice be? Sure. Uh, th this is a very key, key component of, uh, of this transformation, uh, Abe, you know, because the technological problems, as you're hearing from all of us, right, you know, we've been doing this for a little while now. We, we all come with experiences, you know, spanning, you know, 30 years in this business. The technological problems we're finding are very solvable. That's stuff that we do today, right? That's why we are deploying, we have commercial deployments worldwide, right? The, the one area where there's a nuance to success uh, that we find would really help with operators is, uh, is you know, the organizational aspect of this. Uh, you know, operators running the highest quality networks out there, right? Uh, there are certain requirements for their organizations, you know, in terms of skill sets, in terms of how they work through the supply chain with their, with their vendors, right? There's a certain way in which this whole business has been structured. What we are finding, because essentially think about this, what, are, what is NFE doing? It's rapidly moving the legacy part of the supplier domain into the DevOps model, right? Really, that's what enables the OTT folks to do what they do so successfully, right? So when we move to this Dev DevOps, uh, you know, rapid service creation model, organizationally how MNOs interact and work with the suppliers like ourselves, uh, needs to also evolve. It has to be, when we do DevOps, it has to be a true partnership approach, right? Because we can do things, the technology now enables us with VNFs to actually ra rapidly stitch together services. We can create services across different vendors. We can very quickly come up with services that up till now we're taking way too long for you know, mobile network operators to, to create. We can do all that. But to truly be able to do that and realize the benefits of this technology, the business model has to be much more of a symbiotic partnership approach than a vendor supplier model, which puts these firewalls, it actually introduces delays and lags in, in, in achieving what we need to achieve, right? So I would say the one thing would be a much more collaborative partnership model between MNOs and their suppliers uh, in the NFE world. Claudio, recommendations for the operator? Well, I mean, it's my th thunder, so <laughs> you know, I need to come up with something different. Um, uh, definitely, Telco Cloud is a transformation. It's a journey. It's not just as simple as swapping out one, one piece of technology with another one. And it cuts across many different aspects that probably a lot of operators still don't grasp, right? It's about the organization, the processes, the business model, uh, the technology across all the, uh, the different parts of their network. So, uh, uh, you know, finding the right partner definitely, as Amit said, uh, and develop a partnership relationship is, is fundamental. Uh, start to looking at aspects that they didn't think of, uh, like security, for example. We're going towards billions of devices connected, uh, all IP networks, how security will impact. So, you know, really trying to understand what the different aspects are across this journey and find the relevant, uh, relevant uh, partner to, you know, to, to work with them will be a fundamental uh, aspect to consider. Ashish, same question as we move to NFE, SDN, the yeah. cloud, 5G. What would be your recommendations for, let's say, incumbent vendors? I think for incumbent vendors, let's let's look at uh, some of the recent acquisitions of uh, uh, content uh, distribution by uh, the uh, mobile operators, and that is telling that mobile operators are transitioning themselves. They are realizing that hey, I don't want to be just a network provider. I want to become a platform provider. I want to become a service provider. And I think if that is where the service providers want to uh, move their business model uh, towards, then I think the incumbent uh, vendors, they have to uh, transition their products also to meet this new business model that the service provider is uh, moving towards. Uh, it's, it's not a story about, okay, if I have a software that was managing my 
own hardware. Now I'm going to remove the software, put an API layer and put it in the virtualization cloud. That's not where the incumbent vendors should be targeting, but they should be following where service providers are migrating their business model to be more of a platform provider and a service provider. Same question, but for new entrants. For the new entrants, I think I, I, I would like to use the business term, but what I really like for uh, incumbent, uh, for the new entrants is uh, what I would call it as a value innovation. Uh, if you are innovating, try to map those innovation towards the new value that you can provide. Uh, how can uh, telcos or the service providers can leverage the new innovation that uh, a new entrant is trying to bring to either uh, spin off new revenue services or, or optimize their OPEX investment and, and really try to differentiate themselves on those lines. We've been talking about 5G over, I guess, the last year and a half. Ashish, you've been part of those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, surely we'll be talking about that for sure. uh, uh, the coming years. Ashish, uh, I know you're a busy guy. Um, we appreciate your time and being here. Thank you. Uh, we've gone over our time a little bit. I know there are some uh, events going on here at TIA 2015 Network of the Future uh, towards the evening, so we'll get let you guys go to get to that, sure. as I will as well. Uh, Claudio, it was nice meeting you. Um, I'm sure we'll meet up again as well. And Amit, uh, great meeting you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks right, for your thank time. You. Thanks. Yep. Thank Appreciate you. it. And for all of uh, TI Now's coverage of TIA 2015 Network of the Future, please log on to tinow.org. So long.